Hello, dear students. Welcome to the class on anti progestin. So, under anti progestins, you need to learn about the mephipristone. So, mephipristone is an anti progesterone drug with potent anti progestational activity. Along with this, it also possesses significant anti glucocorticoid as well as anti androgenic activity. It is most commonly administered through oral route with a longer plasma of life of around 21 hours. So coming to the few important actions of mephipristone. Mephipristone is a partial agonist as well as the competitive antagonist at both A as well as B forms of the progesterone receptors so whenever there is a absence of a progesterone which commonly occurs during an ovulatory cycles or after menopause so in such conditions when you give mephipristone it produces partial agonistic response on the endometrium to bring about pre decidual changes so that's why the mephipristone they are now called as a progesterone receptor modulator rather than pure progesterone antagonist apart from this it also sensitizes the uterus to the actions of prostaglandin this prostaglandin will going to stimulate the uterine smooth muscle contraction which helps in induction as well as the abortion so the luteolytic effect is made utilized as a postcoital contraceptive pills it can be combined with prostaglandin to be effective as a abortifacient so whenever the mephipristone is combined with the prostaglandin the examples for prostaglandin is gemiprost and mesoprostol this combination becomes a effective medical alternative for the surgical termination of early pregnancy so what is the advantage when you combine this mephipristone in combination with the prostaglandin this mephipristone will going to sensitize the uterus to the prostaglandin by un restraining the prostaglandin release thereby stimulating the uterine smooth muscle contraction and also the dose which is required will be lower for prostaglandins thereby it reduces the side effects of prostaglandins so in the follicular phase the mephipristone which is having anti progestin action will attenuate the mid cycle gn surge from the pituitary gonadotropin surge from the pituitary will be attenuated thereby slowing the follicular development which in turn delays or fails the ovulation process during the luteal phase it prevents the secretory changes by blocking the progesterone action on the endometrium during the later luteal phase in the cycle it blocks the progesterone support to the endometrium thereby unrestrains prostaglandin release thereby sensitivity of prostaglandin to the uterus is increased which is leading to the stimulation of uterine smooth muscle contractions and also mephipristone sensitizes the myometrium to the prostaglandin thereby inducing menstruation if the implantation has already occurred it blocks the decidualization and it dislodges the conceptus which will be removed through menstruation 
and uh, along with this the hcg levels will fall that is human chorionic gonadotropin levels will form and uh, which leads to secondary luteolysis which in turn reduces the endogenous progesterone secretion thereby leading to the softening of the cervix which favors abortion so coming to the pharmacokinetic profile of the mephiprestone mephiprestone is orally active with a oral bioavailability of 25 percent just got longer plasma of life of around 20 to 40 hours it is mainly due to it undergoes enterohepatic circulation it undergoes metabolism in the liver through cyp3a4 since it undergoes metabolism through cyp3a4 it is more prone for drug interactions so whenever you are giving cyp3a4 inducers as well as the inhibitor you should be very careful example for inducers or rifampin and anti convulsants whereas inhibitors if you remember the cyp3a a4 inhibitors they are erythromycin keto conazole etc so it will be getting excreted through bile undergoes enterohepatic circulation thereby causes prolonged action and larger doses may prolong the follicular phase of the subsequent cycle so what are the uses of uh, mephipristone mephipristone the major use being it is used for terminating the early pregnancies the dose which is required is 400 to 600 milligram per day for four days or 800 milligram per day for two days it is effective up to 85 percent the major adverse effect during uh, the administration of mephipristone is it produces prolonged bleeding so the combination of single oral dose of 600 milligram of mephipristone along with the vaginal pessaries of 1 milligram prostaglandin E1 that is gemiprost or oral mesoprostol will be effective up to 95% of the cases during the first 7 weeks after conception and also a single dose of 600 milligrams of mephipristone can be used as effective emergency postcoital contraceptive which delays the ovulation in the following cycle and also up to 63 days of gestation you can give mephipristone with gemiprost so it is a effective medical alternative to surgical termination of pregnancy and also gemiprost which is a prostaglandin it can be given through intravaginal route or you can replace with the mesoprostol it can be given either through intravaginal or through mouth for therapeutic abortion so remember uh, mesoprostol in uh, certain conditions they are used for induction of the labor but this use is unlicensed and mesoprostol which is a prostaglandin even analog it is contraindicated during pregnancy unless it is used as an abortifacient so usually it will be combined with the mephipristone so what are the other side effects with respect to the mephipristone so it can cause vomiting it can cause diarrhea it can cause abdominal discomfort abdominal cramps leg pain pelvic pain five percent of the patient experiences vaginal bleeding so vaginal tablets for prostaglandins can cause sepsis so it is now recommended that both the drugs should be given through mouth in all the patient to avoid risk of sepsis so what are the other uses apart from terminating the pregnancy terminating the early pregnancy it can be used for cervical ripening just before 24 to 30 hours prior to the abortion or the induction you can give mephipristone 
600 milligrams which will softens the cervical mucosa thereby favoring abortions or induction it can be used as a postcoital contraceptive for emergency contraception 600 milligram should be used within 72 hours of uh, intercourse which interferes with the implantation so it can be used as a once a month contraceptive here single 200 milligram mifepristone is used two days after mid cycle surge which will lead to luteal lysis and it interferes with the conception in the later phases that is during the later luteal phase it dislodges the embryo which will be passed through menstruation so next coming to the other use it can be used for induction of the labor because you know that relaxant effect of the progesterone which occurs during the later half of the pregnancy will be blocked by the mephipristone thereby it promotes the labor along with that one more concern is it is going to sensitize the prostaglandin to the uterus it is mainly nowadays indicated for induction in case of intrauterine fetal death as well as to deliver the abnormal fetuses and also it can be used in Cushing syndrome because of their anti glucocorticoid activity and mainly indicated in case of non operable or non resectable tumors so these are the other uses as i said it can be used in endometriosis cushing syndrome breast carcinoma neoplasm such as meningiomas which contains glucocorticoid or progesterone receptor because this mefepristone has got anti progesterone as well as anti glucocorticoid activity so there is one more drug that is lilopristone which is a newer drug it's a potent experimental progesterone inhibitor which is also a effective abortifacient similar to that of the mefipristone and the dose required is 25 mg twice daily so like mefipristone it also has got anti glucocorticoid activity thank you